going to get rained out. So I guess we were just watching that radar carefully, but knew that we'd never had an event rained out at the village. So we really very much appreciate your being here. We have a lot to celebrate. You know, over the years, if you've been coming to Gala, I've often mentioned my dad, who was the biggest inspiration in my life, and everyone lovingly called him Dr. Marty, and he had some wonderful sayings. But one of my favorites was, he would often say, you know, Pam, the world would be a storybook. Because what child doesn't dream of coming to a place where they can have a banana split for breakfast? Or where Halloween and Christmas are celebrated every week, not just every year. Where they can play the world's largest Candyland game or get tucked in by a six-foot-tall bunny rabbit. So Give Kids a World truly is proof positive that dreams come true. Earlier this year on March 7th, we celebrated our 35th anniversary. Wow. And in that time, we've served 176,000 children from around the world. You know, it's a, it's a staggering number and it's easy to look at it like a statistic, but we don't look at it like a statistic because each one of those 176,000 represents a very special child with a very unique story, but a common wish, and that's to come experience all the magic that Central Florida has to offer. And that's what we provide for them. You know, a week-long experience where they can put all of the doctor visits and hospital stays and medical treatments and doctor visits behind them, and instead have everything from life syphilis pleasures to stuff dreams are made of. And you're gonna be able to experience some of that this evening. You know, each one of those children, we don't know their fate. We don't get to meet every single one of them because sometimes it's just so busy. But they all leave their footprints on our hearts. And they also leave a very special memento behind. Because many years ago, a very special wish child once told me, you know, Pam, children like me, we're not afraid of dying. We're afraid of being forgotten. So every wish child, they get to put their name on a little gold star and in the middle of the night, the star fairy swoops down and gathers up those stars and places them on the ceiling of our castle. And hopefully you'll take the time to go over there and look up and have that significance of all of those stars that are gleaming down on you. It's a, an incredible experience for people. And so many families and parents who feel like they're on this road alone, when they walk in there, they no longer feel like they're alone. So here at the village, wishes truly do become stars. You know, again, as I've said, um, every child has a story, and I could tell you thousands of them, but it's always better to hear straight from a child, and we're so blessed this evening to have one of my favorites. So I'd like for you to help me welcome Brody to the stage. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brody Heinrich, and I'm 12 years old. I'm originally from California, I moved to Ohio seven years ago when my dad was stationed at Wright Pat Air Force Base. My dad served over 20 years in the Air Force, deploying four times. <laughs> deploying four times overseas as a secret ninja before he retired. <laughs> we don't really know what he did. Not a lot to tell us. My mom, a two-time cancer survivor and a hero on her own as a pediatric emergency nurse. She likes to take kids like me, take care of kids like me. Then there's me, standing on the stage in front of you representing the coolest village ever. Give kids the world village. Yeah. So would you believe that I've had 17 surgeries? Three just to rebuild my skull, and who knows what else is coming in my future? I like to describe myself as a walking medical disaster. It's easier that way. All my doctors know that nothing's ever simple and easy with me. I make them earn their money. <laughs> After I was born, I got to live as a normal kid for about 72 hours. Then I took my first trip to the hospital, camping out in the NICU. Little did my mom and dad know that was just the beginning of things to come. As time went on and my body grew, my brain decided it needed more room than my skull wanted to give. This condition is known as craniosynostosis. When I was three years old, I was diagnosed with a severe case, which meant I needed sur immediate surgery to relieve the pressures in my brain. The doctors thought, oh, I had a sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> the doctors thought this would be the only surgery I would need to fix my head, but after a few bumps in the road, my brain decided it needed more room. 
At the age of eight, I went in for my second major skull surgery. The new team of doctors knew this made a major difference, but weren't too optimistic on my future. Just over a year after my second skull surgery, I sat in the hospital once again, but this time to take care of my mom after her second battle with cancer. Good job on that. <laughs> For the next year, things were good. My mom was in remission, I was doing good, and my dad's cell phone worked in Iraq. <laughs> then January 2019, things went downhill. This started months of in and out of the hospital with seizures and horrible pain all while my dad was in Iraq. On my 11th birthday, big mom fail, I went in for my biggest, hardest, and most <laughs> painful skull surgery. The doctor described it as a Hail Mary. Good thing I like football. <laughs> Throughout the recovery process, I had one thing to look forward to, my wish trip to Florida. Little did I know how amazing a trip was going to be and how it would change my life forever. In March of 2020, just over three months from my surgery, I arrived at Give Kids World Village for my wish trip. I would describe the next week, the next week of my life as the most magical week. From the minute, from the minute I got here, I was treated like a superstar. Everything was about me and my time here with the amazing staff and volunteers. I started every day with sprinkle and whipped cream covered waffles and of course a huge cup of delicious ice cream. This is the only place where mom and dad can't say no to ice cream, so why not? We spent our days running around the parks. I mean with a kid, a kid with the genie pass, I couldn't be stopped. The most memorable moment of the week was when I got a video call from NXT champion Tommaso Ciampa informing me that I was going to be a member of the first ever audience to be at the WWE Performance Center. How cool is that? <laughs> Little did I know what was going to happen just hours from then. Not only did I get to meet my biggest idol in WWE, but Tommaso took me behind the scenes and introduced me to all the other NXT superstars, to include Triple H. Everyone I met made me feel feel like part of the NXT family. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the village and now I have, thanks to the village, I now have a great friendship with Tommaso and his wife Jesse. Through my struggles in my past year, Tommaso has been there with me, standing in my corner, reminding me how strong I am and who better to have in your corner than the NXT champion. <laughs> it is impossible put to put into words what the village means to me and what it has done for me. Here I'm a kid with no worries, eating ice cream for breakfast, unlimited putt putt mm -hmm. and arcade games. Here, I'm not a sick kid. I'm just a kid surrounded by volunteers and staff that remind me how special I am and how great life is. The memories from this once in a lifetime trip will live with me forever and nothing can take those away from me. Thank you to Miss Pam for inviting me back and allowing me to share my story with all these wonderful people here today. Thank you all for being here and supporting Give Kids the World Village and kids like me.